Hey guys, uh, welcome back to the channel, Zora of Increase. My name is Nays and Nice. For those of you who are new to the channel or who just happen to stumble across this video, and I post new videos every Tuesday and Thursday, all about my faith, God, Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. So today's video is going to be sort of a vlog style. I do want to start incorporating vlog style videos on my channel just because sometimes I don't want to do the whole setup to talk to you guys about some things. And, um, yeah, so it is Good Friday, April 19th. Um, right now it's 2.54 p.m. I'm actually getting myself ready for a service that I have to go to tonight. Um, the seven last sayings of Jesus Christ on the cross tonight, um, that both my bishop and my pastor will be speaking at. And, um, just on my computer doing some editing, doing some work, and probably going to finish cleaning up. I cleaned up a bit last night when my son left to his father's house, um, because the kids didn't have school this week. Um, sorry, they didn't have school on Friday, which is today, and, um, they're out next week for spring break. So, um, he's with his dad until tomorrow. He'll come home tomorrow for Easter Sunday, or Resurrection Sunday. But, um, yeah, I got my clothes on. This shirt, I just wanted to show you guys. I did get this shirt from a company. It says, Not Today Satan, and I really like it. It's like this heather gray color. Or like an ash gray and um with floral print on it and it's really really cute i'm terrible because i don't remember the company's name so i'm gonna look it up quickly um i did get this at like a discount for myself but um i think the shirt is super super cute let me look up the company real quick on instagram because they did contact me um via instagram and asked me if i would um like to try out one of their products and I definitely like their products. It's called the Christian Outlet is what they're called. So I'll leave a link down below to their website. But it's called the Christian Outlet. And um, they have a bunch of like cute little necklaces and pendants and, um, you know, shirts and sweatshirts like that. I really just wanted this shirt because it was cute. I'm just running on here. They have women and men's clothes. But um, this shirt is... Well, right now, it's back to regular price. I got this when it was on sale for, I believe, like, 19 bucks, And then they also gave me a 20% off. But, um, the price for this shirt is $26.97. If you guys can see, $26.97. It's a really cute shirt. I really, really like it. They also have, like, sweaters and things like that. I didn't feel the need to get those. Um, I do like this Faith, Hope, Love shirt. It's so cute. But, um... Yeah, I got this one, and I think I got it in a small. They didn't have an extra small. Um, I am very tiny at the top, so for me, this is a little big. But um, it's nice, roomy, and breathy. But um, yeah, my pastor and my first lady, my pastor who's my first lady and my bishop, have to wear civic attire. I wasn't sure if the members had to wear civic attire, so I'm going somewhat casual, somewhat dressy. So I do have on some black pants with this um, shirt just to keep it simple i didn't really want to wear black and white honestly um and i didn't want to wear all black so i'm wearing this but i'm getting ready to fix my hair but i just wanted to come on and talk to you guys about what's been going on because like what's been going on is like so exciting so um first of all let me just take these pins out of my hair but um if you guys are in the facebook group you guys or are following on instagram you know what's been going on um as far as me so i am in the process of taking some ministerial training classes because i will be elevated within the ministry um which is so exciting um and i'll talk further about it like i'll tell you guys exactly what it is for the down the line i don't want to talk about it now just because i want to stay focused on it but um i did mention before that i was being elevated to a minister but i'm not being elevated to a minister anymore i am being elevated to something else and like i said i'm gonna do a whole nother video um, about it exactly just because I'm still getting used to the idea of it um, you know and oh my god my hair so and someone asked me before if this is all my hair yes all of this is my hair my hair is extremely long um, let me show you guys now so it does go past my boob <laughs> um, not all of it but my hair does go past my boob okay um, so yes this is all my hair I am going to get it wash that and all that soon but my scalp is like terrible from when i got that we put my hair it has destroyed my scalp my scalp looks so sickly it's disgusting um no joke like no matter how much oil i put on my scalp grease it just it looks disgusting it itches really really bad um like right now it's itching it doesn't matter how much i put on here to take care of it i have personally washed my hair myself it doesn't do anything so i need to go to the hair salon and get it done i was gonna go today but I'm probably not going to go until next week, but right now I'm just going to comb it out. Um, I do have a lot of new growth, so I love it. But yes, this is all of my hair. 
and um people ask me what i do to my hair nothing honestly i'm not even gonna lie i don't grease my scalp which is i know it's nasty but for me for some reason when my hair is clean it doesn't grow as quickly as if my hair is dirty and i don't mean like dirty i just mean like my scalp wise i don't put anything on my scalp which i get yelled at by my mother i get yelled at by my hairstylist i just don't um one because i don't like hair <laughs> And it's terrible hair is one of those things where I just I don't care for beauty wise I'm more of the skincare makeup person when it comes to hair I can't stand it like not at all but um I don't do anything to my hair my hair is either in one of maybe three or four styles it's either out literally like just I wear it out straight or part it in the middle um it's in a ponytail a high ponytail I don't really care for low ponytail so I do a high ponytail or a bun or now I've been into the like the two little pigtails or the two buns on my head that's pretty much what I do. I don't really like to do anything else. Sometimes I may do a bantu knot out or braid out where I will keep my hair braided for like two or three days or twist it for two or three days and then take it out to wear it like that curly. But other than that, I don't do any extraneous um, styles to my hair, which people be looking at me like I'm crazy. But I don't like hair. It's just one of those things that I don't like. And I know as a makeup artist, I should learn the basics of hair. I just I don't care for hair it's one of those things I don't like it's kind of like history to me I don't care for history like at all but anyways um so yeah uh we've had two of our ministerial training classes because in order for us to be elevated we um have to take courses a course basically to make sure that we are equipped to be whatever position we are going to be within the ministry and so we've had two I went to the first one it was awesome I missed the second one but I did call in so like because I live in a whole different state from my church, um, my bishop did tell a few of us that those who don't live in the state and who find it hard to get there every Thursday, we are required to attend one person in one class in person, um, but then we can call in for the other classes. I personally want to be there every Thursday. We are having classes every second, third, and fourth Thursday, and if there's a fifth Thursday, we will also have classes. So first Thursdays, we don't have class simply because um, the ministerial team or leaders at my church, we have meetings on Monday on the first Thursdays. But, um, yeah, so I missed the second class, which wasn't supposed to be the case, but we missed it. Um, but I did call in and we did, um, go over some stuff. So the first class we had homework. Let me see if I can grab my folder. So first of all, this is a serious class. Um, my pastor, who's my first lady, she is serious about these classes. Like there is no joke. There's a syllabus. There are required, um, things that we need for the class outside of obviously a study Bible, we are to bring a concordance to her class. She wants us to have a Bible atlas and a Bible dictionary. Um, and I think that was all. Let me look at this again. Um, yeah. So those are like the requirements for the class, which obviously makes sense. Um, we do have our syllabus, which is very extensive. We will have chapels. We will have tests and all that. Like literally, there have been two classes and she's already done two pop quizzes. <laughs> So I know that there are some things that I have to personally do, like write down things on index cards to keep on hand to memorize. And I'm probably going to do a video on me doing certain things like that um, because I really want to take you guys along on this journey. Um, but yeah, so the first class we had was really great. We talked about um, observation and she's basically into the, the type of studying, which is like the inductive Bible study method, um, which I love that method personally. Um, so we had our first class, which was awesome, and we talked about observations, and then she told us to basically observe the entire First Peter chapter 5. Um, so I did that. You guys know how I study already. I went a little extra because there were some things that she required us to do. So what I did for myself and also for my mother, um, because she wanted it, was I went on to Bible Gateway, and I use a New King James translation. That's the translation I prefer. You guys know I love that translation, just because it's as close to the King James as possible. I do want to start using the NASB. I heard that's a really good one, but um, I prefer the New King James. So what I went and did was I went to Bible Gateway, and I got the entire text of First Peter chapter 5 and printed it on paper. Which I don't even know what my husband is. So this is what I did with it. I'll show you guys the blank one. So um, I went and printed it out, wrote it on Word, um, typed it up on Word, and then I triple spaced it. Double spacing it doesn't give me a lot of space, I, I found out. So what I did was triple space it. And then I went in and did the kind of stuff that I do in my Bible journal. Um, I just didn't want to go in my journaling Bible to do it because... I don't know, I feel like my Bible, my journaling Bible is for like my personal studies and I want to keep my class notes and stuff separate from my Bible journal. 
journaling bible but, but um here's <laughs> here is what i did so it went from looking like this right to me doing this and i'm gonna actually redo this over for you guys and show you guys how i did it on this so i did have an extra one printed out to show you guys how i did it but um yeah i went in and i i was serious about this okay you guys i, I was serious here's the first page there's the second page um so yeah and then on top of that because i'm not doing this in a journaling bible i had some paper so this was the key that I created just to um, keep track of like the symbols. And then these are all of my notes, which are go onto the back of this page, onto this page. Um, so yeah, that was the first assignment. And then the second assignment she wanted us to do um, that she gave on Thursday was to do the same thing, but with Joshua chapter one. And um, actually, let me go get my other Bible real quick, you guys. Let me just grab that Bible. It's way over here in the corner. I can't pull it out. Ah! Did I break it? No, I didn't. <laughs> Thought I broke it. But um, okay. So you got. I know I'm supposed to be putting my fixing my hair, but um, whatever. Um, so this is the ESV uh story of redemption Bible, and this is a Bible that I love. I love the like aesthetic of it, honestly, with the gold and the cream. It's really pretty. But I'm actually using this Bible personally to study the book Joshua, and I think that is so funny that she said to study, um, to observe the text of Joshua because I have already started with Joshua. So here it is in this Bible. This is Joshua chapter one. And then we have two and three here. And I think I have to, I've only got up to chapter, yeah, I finished three. So I have to do chapter four. I haven't studied in a minute. But I thought it was so funny because one, I've been telling myself to get back into studying Joshua. And this now gives me a reason to get back into it, but in a more in-depth way. So I do have it already printed out. Joshua one, um, I think it's 18 verses. Yeah, 18 verses. So I have it all printed out. And I'm going to do the same thing that I did with First Peter 5. Um, just I'm going to do it with Joshua. Um, again, I do have another one printed out. Because I'm going to also do this on camera with you guys. Because I really want you guys to, to learn new ways. Um, and I'm not going to tell you guys like everything I'm learning in class. Just because that's personal. And, um, you know, I don't want to give everything away that my pastor is doing but i feel like you know learning the inductive bible study method is cool a lot of you have asked me before to to talk about the inductive bible study method and i personally love the precepts inductive bible study method i think that method is awesome i just feel like there's way too many symbols <laughs> way too many symbols to remember which is why i never do it um and i do it more so in like a journaling bible style um but with this class my pastor is adamant about the way we are to do things and I want to do things according to how she's teaching it so I figured why not so I do have like extra panels I'm probably just gonna show you guys first Peter 5 and then Joshua 1 and then um pretty much leave it at that and then bring you guys along when I'm making like the flashcards and stuff like that um so yeah um I think that was like freaking hilarious that you know she had us do Joshua 1 and I've already been studying Joshua in this bible and I know a lot of you have been asking me um how I do my bible like asking me to do more like journaling bible videos and the the bible study with me videos i got those coming i just i don't know my brain has been trying to figure out how to do things because i only upload twice a week and um i don't know if i want to change that to maybe three or four times a week like i don't know because there's so much that i want to do on this channel but um i just don't know and first of all my channel has grew so much unexpectedly um i know in the facebook group we are almost at 500 members like 500 um group members which is amazing i'm trying to get my facebook page to grow a little bit more just because um i want to work on some things on that um but my youtube channel is i believe over 2000 um i think 2060 or 50 subscribers i don't even know at this point actually let me look right now and tell you guys and really fix my hair because like it's already 308 um, let me take off my glasses. I'm gonna look a little crazy. I can't even see you guys right now. Like, my eyesight is a little blurry. But, you know, bear with me. But, um, right now I'm just gonna put this, what is this? This is the Design Essentials Natural Honey Curl Firming, Curl Forming Custard with Honey and Chamomile. I used to use this in my son's hair. I love putting this in my hair, um, to keep it sleek down without it being gel. I do like the Eco Styler, um, gel, but I prefer this because it's a custard and it doesn't really 
make my hair white so yeah i'm at 2063 subscribers which blows my mind so i do have a giveaway coming for my youtube channel um that is coming soon i actually just recently had three giveaways i have the winners for the giveaways i just haven't contacted them yet just because there's so much going on um so yeah but yeah i'm at 2063 subscribers with so like it blows my mind that i'm literally at 2000 subscribers like it's amazing that a lot of you um support my channel and watch my channel and it even amazes me that i have a lot of male subscribers which when i created zoda if increase i was gearing it towards um you know women in their like 20s and stuff just because that's how old i was i was in my 20s um now I'm in my late 20s i'm about to be 28 hitting, hitting closer to 30 and i know i look like a baby a lot of people always watch my videos and comment and say that i look younger than what i am i am going to be 28 years old june 3rd so yes i am very tiny i look like a baby i have a baby face it, it runs in my family honestly um a lot of the family members on my father's side are short and they have that like baby face so yeah <laughs> um it, it is what it is but um yeah there's just so much great stuff going on let me put this in my hair but yeah so it is good friday you guys and um i'm excited i've i don't know i just i guess this time around i'm really excited because there's a lot of things that i never really focused on back in the day when i was going through what i was going through um because i just wasn't into going to church and being in church every day except sundays and i didn't want to be in church all day on sundays and i'm not looking at the viewfinder right now i'm looking at the screen so i can make sure my hair's right but um you know, there's just a lot of things that I'm seeing take place that I am ever grateful for. And I just finished, matter of fact, reading a book. If you guys follow me on Goodreads, you know what book I was reading. Um, and I'm actually going to get it for you in a second. I don't know if I'm going to wear pigtails or not. <laughs> or a, a bun, I don't know. But we'll see. Let's just get this on. Oh, um, but yeah, I've been reading... I haven't, like, read my Tessa Abstra books. I know a lot of you guys are going to ask. I haven't read the last two yet, which are... Oh, my gosh. I can't even see them right now because I have so many books on the shelf. Oh, you guys can actually see <laughs> these books right here. Like, I have a whole row of books here, a whole row of books on that shelf and that shelf. Because I do have, like I said, a booktube channel. And I got a lot of new books. And then these books I'm currently reading for, like, a readathon that I'm doing. But I have not read Bread of Silence yet or Land of... I mean bread of angels which is the story of lydia and then i haven't read land of silence yet which is the story of the one with the issue of blood by um tessa abstra yet just because i've been so busy and i don't want to read them yet and then be done with her books and then you know be sad to wait for her new book coming out because she is working on another new testament story um which is about priscilla and Aquila. i'm probably saying that name wrong but she's working on it. I've been, I've been literally, I've been stalking her Instagram, you guys. Her and Connie Linka said I've been stalking their Instagrams because I like, am so excited for their books to come out. Like, so excited. But um, yes. So I didn't, I haven't read those yet. I will be reading um, the Bread of Angels in May. That I'm definitely reading. Like, I need to get on. But um, I'm sorry, you guys. Hold on, my pastor just actually uh, text me. Give me one second. Yes, sent. Oh, and my son's father. Um, I have my phone on silent because I don't want it to like vibrate in the video. But, um, I need an emoji. Okay. Sorry about that. But, um, yeah. So, the book... Oh, I was talking about Tessa, right? So yeah, I'm going to read that in um, May. So I have two books I want to talk to you about real quick. So the first one is The Robe by Lois C. Douglas. I literally just finished this book last night, and oh my god. This is considered a Christian fiction, biblical fiction classic book. Um, it's definitely a classical type of book. This book came out in 19... When did this book came out? come out? Um, 1942? 
So yeah, it came out in 1942. This edition I have is a 1999 edition. Um, it's The Robe by Lloyd T. Douglas. And what it says on the front is the enduring classic of one man's quest for faith and truth. Um, so I'm going to read the back to you guys because this book is so complex and simple at the same time that it's hard to really explain. So, um, it says, The classic story of the man who gambled for Christ's robe and won. A Roman soldier, Marcellus, wins Christ's robe as a gambling prize. He then sets forth on a quest to find the truth about the Nazarene's robe, a quest that reaches to, every, to the very root and heart of Christianity, and is set against the vividly limbed background of ancient Rome. Here is a timeless story of adventure, faith, and romance, a tale of spiritual longing and ultimate redemption. So, I'm going to try to explain this book because this book actually has multiple perspectives um so this book is only 25 chapters long this book is 508 pages this book is massive but i loved it i also listened to the audiobook which actually helped because a lot of the names in here are like greek and roman names and um a few jewish names but basically this story um the robe it basically is telling the the story of the crucifixion from the viewpoint of a roman soldier and a greek slave um and Obviously, you have your Jewish people there. But um, Marcellus is the main character of this story. And I don't know if you guys remember the verse, the part in the, the Gospels when they talk about how they um, cast lots for Jesus' garments. So basically in this, they were casting lots for his clothing. And um, Marcellus was the one who won the robe of Jesus Christ. Um, so I don't even know where to even go with this because, first of all, I loved everything about this. I did look at a few reviews and I know that someone, um, actually in the beginning of this book, there is sort of an introduction by, what is his name? Oh my gosh. There's an introduction by Andrew M. Greeley and he talks about how, like, the Catholic religion, um, they denounced this book um just because of how it was written and told and whatnot and he he actually wrote like five good pages about it and i actually went and highlighted some stuff on it but um this book tells the story of the crucifixion from the view of a greek slave and a roman soldier and i think i, I enjoyed it a lot more because they weren't jews and we all know the story of christ um you know, we know about the crucifixion, um, the resurrection, and all that. We all know the story from the Jewish perspective, from what the Bible says. But a book like this really um, makes you appreciate Jesus and who he is. I definitely would say, obviously, read the Bible. Like, that's number one. The Bible, the, the scripture, that is it. Because that is God-breathed word. That is the word of God. It is, it, it's, it's there. Like, it's, <laughs> I don't know what to say. But it's the Bible. Um, but a book like this is something that will help you, say, for people who are finding it hard to really understand, um, you know, the crucifixion and resurrection of Christ, or who are trying to really get their faith going, but don't want to be pushed like scripture in the face. Because I know there are some people out there who don't like having scripture shoved down their face. And unfortunately um there are people like that but scripture is literally the only way that you can really understand jesus but you also can learn about him through experience this book is definitely more of an experience based reading i loved it i gave it five stars i did it's amazing so like i was saying marcellus is a roman soldier and um he did something to basically irritate the prince of his land i guess the prince's name was gaius i hated him he irritated me so much oh my god he irritated me he was annoying he's an annoying stalker that's how i feel but he did something that embarrassed the prince. It really wasn't even like he purposely embarrassed the prince. He did something and the prince just made himself look stupid. So the prince had to blame um, Marcellus. So he sends Marcellus to Fort Manoa, which is basically um, a fort where they, where they send soldiers and people that they want to kill off but can't personally really kill them. So they send them there to basically die off. Um, so he commands Marcellus to go over there to Fort Manoa to be like the new legate, I think that's what they say, legate, um, and command the fort. And um, Marcellus takes Demetrius. Now Demetrius is Marcellus's Greek slave, and um, Demetrius is from Corinth. And I like that they included that he was from Corinth, I think that was awesome. Um, so Demetrius and Marcellus have such like an amazing kind of bond. They are a master and slave, but um, the Gallio family, which is um, Marcellus's last name, his last name is Gallio, his father is a senate. So the Gallio family, they're very different from other Romans. Um, they don't abuse their slaves. They Their slaves basically have freedom um, and liberty to do 
their work without being hounded or abused or beat on so they kind of sort of almost treat their slaves like friends which is not really you know known or well thought of in that time so they kind of treat their you know friends their slaves like friends um so marcellus and demetrius really have such a beautiful bond i loved it their friendship the way they communicated the way they talked um was amazing and they both were coming to faith coming to their own faith with the same experience so um fast forward like i was saying they send him to um um to fort manoa and demetrius decides to go with him um, so they go and at this time they are the people at Fort Manoa are basically told to go to Jerusalem because this is at the time of Passover. So they go and um, the, you know the Romans do what they do or whatever. So Demetrius happens to run across the Messiah, um, and the scene that they cut to with Demetrius seeing the Messiah for the first time is um, with him being on the donkey. So he gets this kind of glimpse of Jesus on the donkey, and I really do want to read read it for you guys if I can find it um so he's basically seeing jesus for the first time on a donkey and he personally has come to the revelation that um you know jesus doesn't want all of these people crowding him he doesn't want all of these people being overly ecstatic about his miracles there's even a, a point where he's like you know the the part where jesus is on his donkey requires you know it requires people to be quiet this is the time when people are saying hosanna hosanna and putting the palms and stuff down people are like rejoicing and being real loud and obnoxious and in the book it says that um jesus you know has this kind of like look in his eyes that's almost sad to, for the people he he kind of feels sad for the people and we all know the story that the jews like wanted him to be the earthly king but didn't understand the type of king that he was it was more so in a heavenly perspective um so then it talks about um, Demetrius, how he's basically the only silent one. So then it says, his silence singled him out. The eyes, basically the eyes of Jesus, calmly appraised Demetrius. They neither widened nor smiled, but in some indefinable manner, they held Demetrius in a grip so firm it was almost a physical compulsion. The message they communicated was something other than sympathy, something more vital than friendly concern. And this is what I underlined as like a memorable quote. Um, it said it was a sort of stabilizing power that swept away all such negations as slavery, poverty, or any afflicting circumstance. Oh my gosh. That verse literally, I think that was the first, no, it wasn't the first one. But like that verse really just made me start to really think about who Jesus was. Um, he definitely didn't care about status. He didn't care about if you were a slave or free. Like he was here for everyone. He died for everyone. Like he was a God, not a he is god but he's also fully man so he was here and he was a savior for not just a specific type of people he was a savior for all like that blew my mind then it said demetrius was sufficed with um the glow of his curious kinship blind with sudden tears he elbowed through the throng and reached the roadside so then there's like this athenian guy that comes up and was like did you see him up close demetrius nodded he asked the athenian asked him if he was crazy he said no the athenian asked him if he was a king demetrius said no not a king so then the guy is like okay so if he's not a king what is he and this is what demetrius says to him he says i don't know but he is something more important than a king and that was only chapter four 74 pages like what this book just it blew my mind because we're so used to, to reading books um, and like hearing about Jesus from the perspective of a Jew, but to see the perspective from a Roman and a Greek who don't know anything about the Messiah and coming to faith, their journey was just so amazing and made me feel so lucky to know my Lord and Savior. It made me feel loved. It made me feel um, cared for. It just made me feel special reading it, you know, reading it from their perspective. Um, and some people may not have liked it because there were parts where um, Demetrius, not Demetrius, where um, Marcellus tried to rationalize things. Like they talked about um, the whole turning water into wine and he really tried to rationalize it. Like you could see him processing it, trying to rationalize the whole idea of Jesus turning water into wine. Um, they talked about him with Jairus' daughter raising her from the dead. They talked about the whole um, woman with the issue of blood. Like, there were specific scriptures that they referenced in here. They talked about Nicodemus. Peter was included in this. Um, Stephen was included in this, as well as his part um, in the Bible where he was, like, stoned. Like, they included a lot. Saul, Paul, basically, but Saul of Tosaurus was um, included in this. I just, I loved how Lloyd took the scripture text and wrote 
a beautiful story around it but wrote it from the perspective of two groups of people that are considered gentiles and how they personally became christians how they came to faith i loved it so much like it's amazing um there was a romance in this and the romance to me i started off disliking it but i had to put my mind in a mindset of like back in the day because back then when you were 16 you were considered a woman so there was a 16 year old named diana and here that marcellus um was in love with they were in love with each other but it was hard for them to be together because of the situations and whatnot but um it oh my god it was so beautiful it was so beautiful and the ending crushed me to pieces like I finished it yesterday my mother was like are you okay what's going on because i literally was like on the verge of crying and freaking out because of the way the book ended was so hard it, it was hard because it was heartbreaking um and you knew in your mind like you knew what happened at the end but they didn't talk about the gruesome stuff that happened at the end because it was like you already know what's happening and it just it broke me so bad and i loved it so much but yeah um another book i want to talk about is a book that I actually got for review for the author because i'm part of the launch team and her book is coming out april 30th and that is going to be the heart of a king by jill eileen smith now i have not read any of jill eileen smith's book books i do own all of them on ebook but i have not read any of them yet so this is the first one i'm going to be reading from her and um this is literally just a bind up of her novellas that she had on king solomon um this is the the loves of solomon so it talks about i think the four wives or the four loves of king solomon and um i'm excited it talks about Nama, who is the desert princess, Ab Ab Abishag, who is the shepherdess, Sitai, which was the daughter of the pharaoh, and Nicola, who is the queen of Sheba. So it talks about the queen of Sheba, um, the pharaoh's daughter, the shepherdess, and desert princess. And it just basically talks about his romance with them. And I'm super excited to like get into this. I was so excited. I do have a bunch of bookmarks up there. I'm not going to get them. There are bookmarks, so I will be giving out bookmarks when I do like giveaways and stuff like that. But um, I'm excited to dive into this. Like I said, this is my first time reading one of her books. I do have the separate novellas, but to have it now physically in like a, a bind up kind of, not a bind up. She basically took the novellas and did like um, combined them all to make a new kind of story in a sense. So I'm excited to dive into this. I really am. Because I actually do like King Solomon. Um, I have studied King David and we're studying King Solomon right now for BSF. And um, it's so amazing. King Solomon and King David were like some of the ma most amazing kings I've ever read and studied in the Bible. Um, I do love King Hezekiah. But um, yeah. So I have this book which I need to read probably next week. And I'm going to have a reading blog with me reading this. Hopefully I can read this in three days. Um, I'm not even sure how many chapters in here. They're, oh, ooh. Mm, okay. There's like 54, 55 chapters. So that's 53 54 chapters so 53 with a postlude and a prelude so 55 chapters so 55 chapters i'm gonna try to split this up into like a three-day reading blog um i don't even know what that he just texted me huh sorry guys um my son's father is texting me i don't know what he's like mom but yeah so i have a reading blog coming on this but um yeah lots lots of things have been going on Lots of exciting stuff, and I just, I can't wait. I am going to start verse mapping, too. I'm going to do verse mapping videos, and I know people do verse mapping in different ways, um, which is fine. I know, um, I think her name is Counting the Cross Ministries. I can't remember her name. Oh, my gosh. But her YouTube channel is Counting the Cross Ministries. She is a part of Daughter of Increase. Um, she does verse mapping on her channel, and I love watching her videos, but I definitely have been wanting to... Oh, sorry, I was looking at the text, but I definitely have been wanting to do um, some verse mapping videos, but I, I wanted to get some, um, gr like, dotted grid paper, if that makes sense. Um, I didn't want to use regular paper, and I didn't want to go back to using um, line paper. So I got some notebooks that are line grid. This one actually is one, but this is not for it. But I have, like, larger ones that are like this that actually um, are, what is this called? I don't even know what this is called. It doesn't say. But, um, they basically have, like, the tiny little dots. I don't know if you guys can see it. So, I have bigger ones that I'm going to use specifically for doing, um, verse mapping. But, yes. Um, oh, also, I do want to tell you guys. I did get, um, eh, if I can get it. So, I went to my library and got, um, the Queen of, the Legend of Sheba, Rise of Queen by Tosca Lee, um, because a lot of people have been telling me to get this, um, and a lot of people have been telling me to read Hava as well, 
I'm probably going to purchase Hava on um, Amazon and like their bargain section. But I did get the Queen of Sheba book. And um, yes, this does talk about Queen of Sheba and King Solomon, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, King Solomon. So I have this in the library. Can't wait to read this to see what this is about. And if I like it, I, I I'll let you guys know. But yeah, I don't know what else to talk about. I mean, just so much has been like going on that keeps me busy. Um, and with all that's going on, I'm kind of happy that I'm not working right now because I get to devote my time. And all of my focus, not just to my son, but to doing all of the work that needs to be done. And, um, let me put my ponytail here for now. There are, are times where I'm just like, I want to work. Because everywhere I go, there's a sign saying, you know, currently hiring, hiring now. Um, and trust me, you guys, I literally get rejections every day. Literally. I fill out literally about 20 job applications a, a, a week. Like, no joke. And, um, I don't talk about it, but, cause it just, it gets discouraging when you're constantly, like, applying for jobs and constantly getting rejections. And it's not even like I don't have the experience. I've been working since I was 14. I started off working with kids for, like, from 14 to 18. Yeah, from 14 to 18, I worked with kids, um, doing, like, summer camp and after school programs. That was what I did, um, Making sure these are right. Yeah, I have a white and a gray. I know. I don't have two gray ones. I don't have two white ones. So they're just mixed match today. Um, but yeah, I've always been, I've always worked. I've worked since I was 14. Um, you know, when I, I turned 14, they had the summer youth program in New York City. And that's what I did. And I always got selected. So I've always worked with kids. I love working with kids. Um, you know, at that time, it was fun for me. I was a counselor. And then I did the after school programs. I was doing dance and, and cheerleading. And, you know, we did great things. I enjoyed it. Um, and then at 18, I went to college, um, and then I got work study at school, and I was still working with kids doing like two at, in a tutoring kind of program. So um, I did that, and then I don't know, I just didn't work 19 until like I don't even know how old I was 20, 20. I think I started work 20 or 21. I started working, um, but and I was at Macy's, and I had such a phenomenal job. I worked at Macy's as a um, on-call beauty advisor and basically what that is I was able to set my own schedule and I worked at multiple counters I didn't just have a set counter so I worked at Lancome almost every week I worked with Estee Lauder I worked at Clinique I worked at Chanel I worked at Clarence um, and yeah I was able to work with those high-end you know beauty brands and loved it I was making a good amount of money per month like you were getting um, your actual hourly wage plus commission. So I was getting good money. Good money. Plus, you, I was getting free profit. Sorry about that camera cut off. I had to take off the footage because I forgot I already put it on my computer. But, um, yeah, um, I was making good money. Like, good money getting products that I was putting into my kit. So I enjoyed working. Um, and then I had to leave my job because we had some housing situation. And um, we ended up moving back to New York. And then I had to basically help my mom out with my siblings so I couldn't continue working. Um, and then that summer, I ended up being able to become a makeup assistant for a celebrity makeup artist, which was the best experience in my life. Um, I learned so much from her. Her name is Teresa Francine. Um, she has worked with a lot of celebrities. She's worked with Dej Loaf. She's worked with Mary Mary. Um, she's worked on Real Housewives of Atlanta, I believe. She's worked with... Um, not Cassie. It's not Cassie. I can't remember the girl's name. Um, Karu Karuchi, I think it is. She's worked with. She's done Ashanti. Like, I love Teresa. I love her so much. She's amazing. She has taught me so much. I learned so much from her. Um, so I was able to work with her, but then I found out I was pregnant. And then I couldn't work because it was a lot of like going back and forth, traveling with makeup kits and stuff like that and helping her. So I couldn't consistently keep up with that. So I had to stop. Um, so, you know, then I got the job um, working at a hair salon which I haven't done that in a minute just because it costs a lot for me to travel back and forth to the hair salon from where I live I think it's like $15 10 to $15 depending on how lift it you know feels um because you know lift bases their price on weather and timing and all that so like I would go to the shop for like one or one person and that entire amount of money that I was making was basically going to me traveling back and forth and that was basically me losing out on funds. So, you know, 
I definitely could go back into doing like shoots and stuff in the city, but again, that's traveling fare. Like I would have to travel there and make sure that I put that into like my fees and stuff like that. And it's it's just so much. And I know once I get my license, everything will be fine. I haven't got my license yet. I know I'm 28. Don't know how to drive. I don't even got a permit. See, living in I'm I, I still have that New York mentality. I'm I'm a New Yorker, so I didn't have to learn. I've always wanted to, but I didn't have to. It was a requirement because you know, MTA was you know you could able you could catch a train the bus the cab whatever out here in jersey it's a little different because you know luckily where we live um anytime we moved out here in jersey we lived in a vicinity close to like stores and you know we were like five or ten minute walk from like the downtown area but to get to other locations you need a car so i want to get a car and like i could easily go to work at the mall but i ain't got no car and to to get to the, to to the mall by train, you know they trains and they buses run every hour, two hours. I went ahead. I ain't got the time for that. Okay, so you know, I've been at home and um, daughter of increase has been keeping me busy, which I love it so much. Um, but you know, I still miss working. I still miss making money. It's not fun, you know, not having my own money when I just want to go get my nails done or if I want to go get a burger or some Fendras from McDonald's. Like, it pisses me off that I can't do that. But I also recognize that even though I haven't worked in as many years as I have, um, I'm still able to do the necessities by the grace of God. God is providing for me um, financially. He's providing for me with everything that I need. Um, most people at my age, at 21 with a kid they are not allowed to stay at home like my mother is the best mother on earth um she supports me and my siblings and everything that we do she is not in a rush to kick us out um she definitely wants us to make sure that we're ready to move she doesn't want us to leave and then something happens and we have to come back like that's something my mother never wants to do and i'm very grateful for her for being the way that she is my mother is like amazing to me but um you know, you don't have many 28, 27-year-olds. I'm saying 28 because I'm about to be 28. But you don't have many 27-year-olds who can live like I'm living. Um, I've had people tell me how they're like, they wish they could have my life. Um, and I'm just like, why? You don't know what I had to go through. You don't know what I have to go through. You don't know how I feel. Like, and I've noticed that we, we look at other people's lives and want what they have. But we don't know what they're going through behind closed doors. Um, and for me, there was a there's there was a, a large struggle for me to get to the point where I'm at, I am now. And um, yeah, I still wish to work, but I don't think it's in the cards for me to work a nine to five. Trust me, I've tried. I sit and do job applications. I've applied to McDonald's. I've applied to Burger Kings. I've applied to Popeyes. I've applied to Wendy's. And I'm applying to these places because they're literally like walking vicinity for me. I can walk there. I've applied to Rite Aid, Walgreens, um, CBS. I've applied at ShopRite, Four Mills, Family Dollar, Dollar Tree. Like, I've applied to these places, you guys, and I've been rejected or have no response from them. And um, to literally sit and do these applications almost every day and to not get a response or get rejected. I have a, reapplied to Macy's, haven't been able to work back then. I don't know why. Like, I just haven't. Um, I've applied to work at uh, Morphe. Before and I, I think I talked about that experience where um around my birthday time God gave me the opportunity to apply and basically at the interview I was basically told I was gonna get the job. Um, but then I got the phone call and they told me that I couldn't get the job and that literally broke me, um, like broke my heart because I was excited about it. I was so stoked for it. And I knew that God gave me the job. Like, he gave me the opportunity to apply to a company that I've always loved um, and wanted to work for. But then it was just like, I'm going to take it back. And I know sometimes God does things. Um, and at, first of all, everything that he does is for our good. It's never to hurt us. And though it may hurt, um, it's not to harm us. Um, so I know that there was a reason behind him doing what he did um trust me because i prayed about it i was sitting there having conversations with him about it like i needed to know why would he do that to me because it, it really hurt like i literally cried when they called me and told me we went with someone else i hung up that phone and i 
was bawling because it hurt so much because it was like I, I knew that he gave it to me I really really wanted it I prayed about it and this was an opportunity that I was excited for but at the end of the day I understood why he took it because if I would have got that job I would have had to move out I would have had to go live with my not live but I would have had to stay with my son's father and um there's no telling what would have happened um you know with my relationship with him and how things could have gone um and I know that there's what's going on my computer. I know that there is always a reason behind what he does, um, and I see now that me not working is allowing me to be focused on him and his word, and to have the relationship that I probably should have had way back when I was 16 years old. This is stuff that I should have been doing when I was 16, guys. But I completely ignored the signs. Completely ignored being so into the word of God. I didn't care to read the word of God unless I was in church. Like I loved Sunday school. I loved diving into the word. I loved breaking it down. But I didn't do it because I was I was so caught up in my own emotions and my own worries and my own cares and my own situations. But um, I don't know. It sucks that I don't work. Um, it really does. Like I really want to work. Um, people ask me what I do. I'm a stay at home mom. I'm freelance makeup artist. When the last time I did a gig, I don't know. The last time I've done someone makeup, I don't even wear makeup on my face anymore. Like, and it's not that I don't want to wear it because I do. I just I honestly lost the passion for it, and I know I need to start praying and asking God to give me back that passion because like, He gave me that talent to do makeup. And I don't want nobody coming on this video in the comments down below talking about makeup is bad. The Bible says don't wear makeup. Don't do it. Because the Bible says a lot. But where in the Bible does it say not to wear makeup? Where does in the Bible does it say not to um, put on cute clothes? Like, the Bible talks about vanity. Yes, don't use that stuff to um, pump yourself up. Like, you can use makeup. It doesn't, it doesn't hurt to use makeup. My, the way that I do makeup application is very different from how other people do makeup application. Um, I don't cake makeup on my face, number one just no go um number two i use makeup to enhance my natural beauty and what i mean by that is i use it to enhance my eye color i use it to enhance my lips i use it to enhance you know the arch of my brow. i use it very subtly not caking my face with tons and tons of makeup. i just don't do that um and i just i don't i incorporate god into my um makeup artistry i i do so i don't like when people try to come on my channel and fight fight or argue with me about makeup in in the gospel and the word of god because it, it irritates me um especially when god gave me that talent it was not something that i learned like it wasn't something that i cared for i never cared for makeup in high school i've never cared for it in middle school i didn't start liking makeup until um senior prom for 12th grade is when i started liking makeup and then freshman year of college it just became an interest and I started to personally learn. I started doing photo shoots and makeup gigs and then I started learning different techniques and it was something that God literally gave me a passion for. <clears throat> so I don't want nobody saying that makeup is wrong because it's not wrong. Give me a scripture that says it's wrong and not the scripture where it taught. Let me, let me actually look up the scripture because people irritate me with that scripture. Um, scripture, I'm literally going to look it up. Scriptures on makeup because... People, it's one specific scripture people use all the times. So it's First Timothy two verse nine and ten. Likewise, also I'm reading it in the ESV because that's what the, the the website is giving me. But um, likewise, also that women should adorn themselves in respectable apparel with modesty and self control, not with braided hair and gold or pearls or costly attire but with what is proper for women who profess godliness with good works um then there's first peter 3 and 3 through 4 do not let your adorning be external the braiding of hair and putting on of gold jewelry or the clothing you wear but let your adorning be hidden be the hidden person on the of the heart with the imperishable beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit which in god's sight is very precious i don't want nobody giving me those verses because just don't um, yes, those verses say what they say, but those verses are more so towards those who pretend to be godly and, um, they dress godly, but on the inside they're ruthless and they're evil. So, and the, and the verse doesn't even talk about makeup. So don't come to me with those verses cause you will not like what I have to say. Um, and I'm not going to be rude, but just don't do that because 
I don't like when people bash other people for putting on makeup. Now, yes, yeah, some people do do it, go extreme out the way with makeup. Um, some people try to hide their natural beauty. I don't condone hiding your natural beauty. That's just me. I prefer for you to use makeup to enhance your beauty, not to cake your face with makeup and then your skin breaks out. That's just not me. Um, but yeah, like I was saying, I lost a passion for it um, just because I felt like I wasn't good enough. Um, you know, that's just how I felt. I felt like I wasn't good enough to do it. I started to feel, um, like my kit wasn't, you know, worth it. My skin, like, I really start I started to feel down about it. Um, but I actually recently had a conversation with my mother and she was just like, you need to pray and ask God to give you, um, that fire back because I used to wear makeup every day, literally. Um, it was fun. It's a form of art for me. It's a form of art of expression. I used to do makeup tutorials. I used to just do my makeup all the time. Like, I miss doing that. But I just haven't been into it. So I definitely know that's something I need to pray about. But, um, oh, something else I want to mention. I have free, um, products, free products, freebies, um, like free printables coming soon. I only have a few of them done right now. I was trying to make sure that I had 10, but I'm probably just going to release the ones that I have now in May. So I do have freebies coming only because when we do Bible studies, I am now charging for those. Um, for like the Bible study notes, so freebies are coming to the blog and stuff, so that information is coming soon once I release it. I also have t-shirts that I'm working on. I told you guys before how I had a daughter up increased t-shirt. Well, I made the, um, design for it. I just have to actually, like, put them on the shirt. So, once I get two of the shirts done, I'm going to come back and tell you guys about the, um the designs i'm gonna have right now they're just gonna say daughter of increase with the john 330 scripture i do have other ones in in my mind that i want to do i'm also going to be working on some coffee mugs that are going to have the doi um, monogram on them as well as um other things so there's a lot of stuff that i want to do i'm working on doing i'm thinking about creating some bracelets as well that i want to sell um you know in the doi colors and um you know, I'm, there's a lot I, I have in my mind that I want to do. I do eventually want to create, like, a prayer journal and a devotional and maybe even a book. So, um, there's so much that I want to do. It's just a matter of me executing those and taking the time to get them done. But, um, yeah, I guess that's it for this video. I just really wanted to talk about the minister classes that I'm taking because they're so fun and I'm loving and I'm gaining so much stuff, like, so much knowledge from my first lady. Like, she's my pastor. I say first lady... Because I feel like it's weird to call her pastor, but I know that she's a pastor, so I need to call her pastor. But, yeah. But, um, I will say that I'm blessed to have the church that I have and the leaders that I have. Because they're very, they're very serious about all their members, and especially the leaders within the ministry, having a full understanding of the word of God. And I can totally appreciate that. And I thank God in general for the two churches that he's had me at my first church was called um prayer temple church in the bronx and they very much were um uh what's, what's the word they really was like intense with the kids learning the scriptures but i will say flight to freedom worship center incorporated the church that i am at right now my amazing church that i am at right now they go so hard <laughs> for you knowing the word of god like studying it breaking it down i mean bible study classes they got us doing sermonettes like where you do that at bible study and the, like i said these are not the minister classes i mean regular tuesday night bible studies that we have they are having us do like sermonettes you guys on scripture which i think is amazing because most bible study classes don't do that you know so um i just i love the church so much. i love the ministry i love my leaders i love the other leaders co-laborers just I love everything about it and um i'm blessed to have the leaders that i have i'm blessed to have the church that i have and i'm blessed to be able to be at a point now where i can fully use the gifts and the talents god has given me i know that there's so much more in store and i'm taking my time easing into it because i'm i, I freak out you guys i'm not gonna lie um like i said i'm gonna tell you guys what i'm being elevated as soon i'm just it's taking some time to um for me to really get used to the idea i guess um because i'm technically doing the work already i just i don't know i told you guys before there's something with titles that kind of like freak me out like i don't I don't know when people call daughter of increase a ministry i just be like why like i know it's a ministry but like why you call it a ministry i don't know 
that's just how I think in my head, just because I've been, I've seen, you know, other churches and other ministries use the titles and the word ministry and take it out of context and use it for their good. And none of this is about me. It never is about me. It never will be about me. It is about God, but I'm just using myself as a vessel and an example to help other people understand the word of God. Um, but yeah, there's so much we, I, I have to, to get so much and I'm so excited, so excited for the endeavor um right now it's 3 49 so i'm gonna end this vlog um really pretty much here uh i probably will blog later like add a clip later to the service that i'm going to because like i said both my bishop and my pastor is speaking at this service it's the seven last sayings i know that my first lady is doing the first saying um but i'm not sure what my bishop is preaching on so i'm excited for this um you know i'm probably gonna wear pigtails I don't know bun pigtails which I, which I don't know I feel like the buns keep me not looking like a little kid <laughs> the pigtails make, definitely make me look like a little girl and the bun is like out of my way so I might do the buns I don't know we'll see let's do buns so we're gonna do buns in my head and I have my coffee I'm probably gonna stick it back in the refrigerator so it can be cold before I leave um, Mind you, that's coffee I made yesterday, you guys, that I was supposed to drink yesterday, but I didn't end up going to class. So I sipped on it a little bit at home, and then I ended up drinking ginger ale and a sun kiss. So it just never got drunk. Um, So I've had it in <laughs> the refrigerator, and I took it out this morning to drink, and this is all that I drank this morning. So now, because I've been so busy editing videos for my other channel. And, um... Yeah, as far as, because I know somebody's going to ask about the testimony series. That's coming. Um, the next testimony is probably going to be on suicide because um, I do have a testimony with that. And um, I know I had a list of like the stuff that I wanted to talk about, but I can't find it, so I have to find it. But I know one of my testimony videos will be on suicide and um, probably on my whole pregnancy. Um, so those two will most likely be next um, as far as the testimony series. If you haven't watched any of those videos already... I'll leave a link down below to the playlist. I've done one on depression and I've also done one on um, sexual abuse because, you know, yeah. Um, but if you guys want to see those, you can click just click the description box down below to get the link to that. But um, yeah, I'm ready for today. It's 3.51. I just need to get my Bible bag and everything together. I need to clean up my room because my room is a hot mess. And you guys can't see it, but technically it's not a hot mess. But I guess because my son's mattress is there, it makes it look a hot mess. But um, right there... Right here, I have my son's mattress. I took it off the bed because I changed the seats and stuff. And then I have, like, coats and blankets ah, right here. <laughs> um, so it looks crazy, but it's not crazy. It's very much organized. It just looks crazy. Um, but, yeah, I need to put so many of my books away. But, yeah. So definitely be on the lookout for when I do the First Peter and um, Joshua 1 breakdown um kind of inductive bible study because i know i did get asked on instagram and um yeah i'm trying to take instagram a little bit more serious and be a little bit more professional with my, my photos so yes um but yeah i'm gonna do a lot more things on the channel soon um i'm just you know my i still have reviews coming i'm going to be doing the next two video the next two book reviews you're gonna see are going to be on um lies young woman believe as well as Oh my god, the, the Spiritual Warfare book, that book. Um, those two will be definite ones. And then I'm going to do some biblical fiction books as well. Because I do want to, like I said, incorporate a lot of um, other things on my channel. But I think that's it for now. I'm not sure if there's anything else. So I'm just going to end this video here. And if I have any clips from the service, that'll be edited at the end. So i chat with you guys later. Beginning at the 33rd verse. When you have it, say amen. amen. And when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him and the male that has gone through four trials. After Jesus has been crucified by verbal attacks, he was called that he was perverting. 
he was set to claim he was the king. Uh, they passed him around because they couldn't find fault in him. And the one that had fault, they let him go. And as I read, I come to understand that in this day and in this time, although Jesus walked this earth and he showed us the way, it still seemed so hard for us to follow. Yet we say we want to be like him. We say we desire to be like him. But we consistently find ourselves being the opposite of him. It's easier for us to say I'll lay my cross down and I'll put my Bible down. But after all that Jesus had been through, they were mocking him. They tore his clothes. Amen.
ponder upon this particular message. And I realize in order to really understand what Jesus finished, you have to know what Jesus started. The Bible says in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And Christ came to start a war. He came. The Bible says, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but rather through him that the world might be saved. He came for a specific task, for a specific purpose. What I realize is that many people today are living their life without purpose. Without purpose, that's it. Many people are coming to church without purpose. Many people are serving in the pulpit without purpose. But Jesus understood his purpose, which allowed him to stay focused on his mission. I was looking back to how it all started. It all started when God said, let there be light. And then light appeared. And then he spoke to the atmosphere and the, and the firmness. And then, then thirdly, the, 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 drown, the, dry, the dry ground and the plants. And then he put the sun and the moon and the stars in place. And then on the fifth day, he said, the birds and the seas and the animals ought to be in place. But then on the sixth day, somebody say six. Six. That's the word that I'm preaching today. The sixth day. The six words that Jesus spoke on was on. This, this word is the sixth word, which, which, which literally means man. Imperfection. And I thought about that. I said, how could it mean imperfection? Because the number seven is the number of perfection. But I realized that many people never reach the number of perfection. Christ, God, created man. And when he finished creating man, he said, now I can rest. And what I realized is even in the last seven scenes, hallelujah, this, Jesus Christ says, it is finished. And then, I'll let you, amen, amen. And then he says, into your hands, into your hands, into my father's hands, I commend my soul. And so what I realized is that there was something correlating the same thing But if that's if it dies, it produces many seeds. 
It's amazing. They asked him a question. They just wanted to see Jesus. But Jesus then turns around and says, anyone who, who loves their life will lose it. While anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. What is he saying? He's saying that we also must die just like he had to die. It is 1.51 a.m. in the morning right now. Just got home from service. Um, you guys probably saw the clips from the service with my bishop and my pastor preaching. My pastor preached the first word and my bishop preached the sixth. Um, but yeah, I'm tired. I take these glasses off, you can see how tired I am. Very tired. I'm debating if I want to go to sleep or just stay up because um, I do got to get up in the morning. I have dance rehearsal today at 10 a.m. So, yeah. We're rehearsing for Sunday, which is Resurrection Sunday. But then I also have to go to the Christian bookstore and get some stuff for the minister's class. I just need to get a Bible and um, a compact concordance ring. So I need those two things. And then I gotta go to the dance store and get my garment, actually. I gotta find the book for it. I don't even know where the book is. Ugh. Is it over here? No. Oh, it's over here. So, my dance book. Um, I have to go to the store tomorrow. It's called Gigi's Dance and Active Wear. Do they have their hours on here? Probably not. No, I'm going to look them up on Facebook to see their hours. But I have to go there tomorrow and get a gold overlay. Sorry, I'm, I'm just looking in this book right now at overlays. Um, this is so. This is the overlay that I need. I don't know if you guys see. I need this gold overlay. Hopefully, they have it in the store in a size medium. I don't know. Medium can be too big, but yeah. Or even if they have like this one, I'll work with that one. But I need to. get a gold overlay for tomorrow for my dress because yes so this is the dress that we have here but it's it's a scarlet color like a, a bur it's almost burgundy they call it scarlet but it's more so burgundy it's like burgundy and gold so we have that tomorrow for sunday it's this color here with the gold cross so i have to get a gold overlay um can you guys tell i'm tired I just don't know if I'm going to go to sleep or not. Because if I go to sleep, I'm probably not getting up in the morning. <laughs> so, yeah. I might stay up and read. Because there's some books that I need to finish reading. But, um. Yeah, I, I got my food. <laughs> we stopped and got White Castles. I had four burgers. I ate two. So I still have two burgers and my fries and my shake. Um, but yeah, really tired. Oh, I have homework to do, so I should probably stay up and do that. I have Bible study homework to do. We have to do a sermonette. Where's the assignment? Let me see. 
Here it is. So right now we're to, they're going through the miracles in the Bible. Um, and they're on miracles of resurrection. So basically I have to pick one of these incidents here. You guys can see I have to pick one of these. And write a five minute sermon it, which is basically like a page and I have sermon it. So I probably should read through all of these scriptures tonight. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I'm tired. But I, I have to do it today so I can bring it in on Sunday to church. And then I have to do Thursday's homework. I'll probably start that on Monday. For minister's class. Because this is actual like homework for Tuesday Bible study. And then I also get homework for Thursday's um, ministerial training classes. I'm so tired. I still have yet to eat. Like, it's 1.56. I didn't even make the, um... What you call it? The the newsletter, the Faith Journal newsletter. I haven't written that yet. I missed last week because Saturday we had a busy day. Um, I have, Friday was a busy day to prepare for Saturday. Because last Saturday we went to a, a service for um, Seven Last Saints as well. And I feel terrible because I need to announce the winners. Like, the winners are already picked. I just need to announce them, but I'm just I'm so tired. I don't know. But I'm going to end this vlog here. I will probably do another vlog starting tomorrow. Probably take all this footage off this phone and put it on my computer. And then probably record tomorrow since I do have dance rehearsal. I also have to go to the Christian bookstore. Um, and then I have to go to the dance store. And then I gotta do some homework. <laughs> so, I'm saying tomorrow because I haven't slept yet. So, I don't consider it a new day until I fall asleep. If I fall asleep. It's 1.57 right now. So I'm probably not even gonna sleep. I'm probably just gonna lay across my bed. <laughs> like, I still have all my clothes and everything, guys. It's crazy. But, um, yeah, as you guys can see, I still got my Not Today Satan shirt. I don't know if I'm gonna eat the rest of my food. I'll probably put it in the bag because I'm tired. But yeah, it's 1:57 right now. I don't feel like doing anything, so I'm probably just gonna lay across this bed and listen to an audiobook. I am reading two books right now. I'm reading one. Should have been starting a second one because I just finished the robe. But um, yeah, my bed still got stuff on it. I got this concordance here because I painted my books. Um, that's like the new thing for me is like painting my books. Let me show you guys. This is not Christian related whatsoever. <laughs> so I apologize. But um, if I can take it out, the little dust jacket thing. <laughs> oh my gosh, I can't even take it out. Okay. There we go. So, what I've been doing lately is coloring, like painting the edges of my books. So, I painted this one orange to match the cover. So, it's orange. I have a red one over here that I painted. And a pink one, actually. Red and pink. That I did. Let me grab it. It's over here. Um, so, this book is a middle grade book and I painted the edges red. I don't know why. <laughs> Then we have this one. This one here, I painted it pink. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to pick it up on camera, but it's definitely pink. It's like a nice baby pink. Um, and I think I painted two more. I think I did. I did. Let me grab them. So I painted three more. So I did this one in rose gold. I did this one in lavender. So like I have a, a light pink and a lavender. Don't don't ask me why. But those and then I did one more. This chunky monkey in rose gold as well. So yeah. But it's 159. I'm gonna stop rambling. I'm gonna end this vlog here. You guys are white. What's that? I don't know what that is. Let's take that off. But um, now it's 2 o'clock. 2 a.m. Saturday, April 20th. 
Tomorrow's my sister's 14th birthday. Tomorrow's also Resurrection Sunday. And I'm still awake right now. So, I'm going to take these glasses off my face. I'm going to get in this bed and relax. And, um, I chat with you all in the next video because I'm, like, really tired right now. Really tired. But, yeah. Bye.